Right, this is one of those time-sensitive situational videos which won't mean deadly in six months' time, but uh, either way, Autodesk have recently re released their latest round of DLC for Inverted 2018. Uh, it'll be 18.2, which is the second major subscription update of the year for Inverted 2018. Uh, they usually bring around three, normally about three of these subscription updates out per year, and it just brings a whole load of bunch of new features and stuff. Some Sometimes it's awesome stuff, sometimes it's just like little bug fixes and niche things. Uh, but this one's just been released. Uh, unfortunately, if you ain't throwing money at Autodesk, you ain't getting diddly. It's only available to people that are on subscription who are actually paying annually for Inventor. You log in your Autodesk account and you'll get your subscription update that way. Or if you're lucky, you may or you may not find it on the desktop app. Who knows these days? Their, their, their methods for delivering updates and service packs is an absolute circus at the moment. So uh, who knows where you, you... You just dig around. Just keep punting punting stuff and you might uh, you might end up finding it who knows anyway right 2018.2 what's in here well the big change for 2018.2 is interoperability i hate i oh god i hate that word so much i wish it'd stop using it that word did not exist before you lot started using it stop saying interoperability oh my god it just makes me angry every time i say it uh, but it's any card for fusion 360 which which is actually which is all right i suppose that's that's good any card is inventor's ability to take uh, it's like SolidWorks models, right? So you go over to Inventor and you go Place, right? And down here you've got like Katia, you've got you know NX, you've got Pro Engineer, SolidWorks, that kind of thing. And you can drop those other CAD files into Inventor without it having to convert them into you know Inventor base blob blobs of nothingness. It can retain the link back to the original SolidWorks files. So if, if someone from SolidWorks or works for SolidWorks, updates their models, then the AnyCAD link will update the, the version you placed into Inventor. That's that's AnyCAD in a nutshell. Uh, so that's now working for Fusion 360. So you can place Fusion 360 designs into Inventor, and likewise you can send few, uh, Inventor designs over to Fusion 360. Um, so, right, Siren's opinion time now. Uh, the uh, it's all right. It's fine that they've, that they've done this. It's great. It's ticking the box. Great, we can do this. If anybody has the need to do this, then they can do this. Honestly, though, honestly, I mean, sending inventor files to Fusion Three Sixty, I, I I can't speak for the entire world, right? I can't. I mean, there'll be use cases for this which I've I just cannot foresee. I've got I just don't know about that will happen without me even being able to think about what they are, right? So I can't say that nobody's going to use this. That That's nonsense. I personally haven't come across anybody, though, that would want to send Inventor stuff into Fusion 360 because I don't know of any companies that use the two same product, use those two products in tandem. Or I don't know any companies that use Inventor and then work with in th that close of a relationship with companies that use Fusion 360. So I don't see where you would do this. Other than the only time I've personally wanted to send Inventor stuff over to Fusion 360 is when I needed to, or I wanted to use the the Fusion 360 rendering engine, which is by a country mile better than Inventor, miles better than Inventor. So I wanted to send Inventor stuff into Fusion 360 for the cloud rendering that Fusion has. Uh, and I had to use the AnyCAD. I used it in Alpha. Kindly was given a, a, an Alpha release of all this stuff before it went live a few months ago. Uh, and it was it was awful. <laughs> it was awful. The connector that you have to install to get invented data up into a cloud area for Fusion to then pick it up was horrible. And I really, really hope it's not the same one that's went live because it was terrible. There's no way I'm installing that on my computer. It was awful. Horrible. I'll, if it is, I'll, I'm not going to waffle on about it now because we'll just go off on a tangent. But I'm going to have to test it and see if it is. And that, that will be a whole new video on its own, if it's the same thing. Uh, so, yeah, sending Inventor stuff over to Fusion 360, great if you want to use the rendering engine, I suppose, in a, in a hypothetical, I'm sure it exists somewhere world, you're collaborating with smaller companies that use Fusion 360 and you're the, you're the big dick using Inventor, fine. Uh, sending Fusion 360 stuff back to Inventor, you know, when you eventually come to your senses and you realise you've been doing it all wrong and you wake up and smell the coffee and you're like, yeah, I should have been using this all along. Well, then all the stuff you've previously done in Fusion 360, you can move it into Inventor. -la 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 -la. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but yeah, okay. The any cad links there, that's great. Uh, tick in the box. However, however, you've got... A, I mean, I don't even understand half of the stuff that's going on here. I mean, what the hell's Fusion Team? I don't know. It's it's a thing. I'm sure people are using it, so I'm 
sounding like a proper bit of a dickhole by saying, no, what's Fusion 2? Oh, I'm so, I'm so hip, I'm too clever to understand what Fusion 2... No, it will be a thing, but, I mean, is it the same as... Is, is It's not the thing that, you know, if you buy Fusion and you get a cloud, that's not Fusion Team, is it? Fusion Team something else. Is it Fusion Lifecycle, which is formerly PLM360, which is the Fusion PLM system? Is it that? If it's not that, why do you need another one? Why do you need another Fusion Cloud area? I don't know what it is. So you click the the, the What is Fusion Team link, which is, uh, which is hidden here, so there it is. And then you get this nonsensical die. Who put this together? Oh, my God. What is Fusion Team? Well, let's throw the most complicated, data-rich image at people <laughs> to try and simplify it. Oh, really? Oh, really? My eyes hurt. Literally, my eyes are bleeding just from looking at this image. I, I cannot I cannot look at that anymore. Anyway, so you need Fusion Team, which kind of probably rules out most people. You know, if, you, if you've bought, pro, you know, product design collection and manufacturing suite utilities, whatever it's called, and you get Inventor of Fusion 360, you, you ain't getting Fusion Team, so you can't use any card, which, which is a bit of a swizz, if I'm honest, like. That's a bit of a swizz. You have to buy something, or I'm assuming Fusion Team ain't free, so you have to subscribe to this, I allegedly, possibly, maybe, to use the, some features that you get in a license that's costing you two and a half grand a year already. If that's the case, that sucks. That that really does suck. And again, that would that would be something for a different video to, to run on about. But either way, it's in. It's in. There you are. So if any card for Fusion 360, tick in the box, move on. Uh, right, parts, model based definition. We can now do all around symbols for feature con control frames in uh, the model based definition. So in the 3D model, you can put this symbol on here with the all around symbol on. Great, great. Uh, some poor sod on the development team had to work on including model based definition in 3D annotations in the DWF file format. I really do feel your pain if that was you a dying file format and you've been tasked with having to add new stuff into a dying file format that nobody wants to use voluntarily. Uh, but it's there, but it's there. But most people these days, you would suspect, if they're on 2018 and they're exporting 3D read-only files, they're, they're going to be going with PDFs unless they've got this massive back catalogue of DWFs that that they've been told they can't you know, deviate from. Why, 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 why would we, we've got a massive millions of DWF files. Why would we start changing to PDFs? It's just confusing. No, no what's confusing is design review. It's confusing. Uh, 3D PDF export uh, it now supports associated fate high. All right, so a lot of these updates are just niche little, not necessarily bug fixes, but like, yeah, that, that thing, that thing that should have been in on day one, it kind of didn't with enough time. Well, it's in now kind of thing. There's quite a few of those. Uh, sync unfold rules in sheet metal parts. Yeah, again, great. I'm sure that is really useful for some people, but can't say I've ever felt the need. I'll come across the need. Uh, assemblies ground and root enhancement. So this is when you're in an assembly and you're on the productivity area, right? You can pick a part and then drop down the productivity menu, which uh, used to be the Express Tools for Inventor. Did it? Was the Express Tools one like the S one of those STK plugin things? Uh, well, you can now select ground and root, which formerly was called ground and root component. And it'll give, give you a dialog box where you can say, I want to ground and root that at the origin. So you get these new ticky boxes here. Uh, make some flush constraints with the origin planes and then move that part up the browser right at the very top, which is, that's kind of handy. Like that, that is good. That's a good quality of life thing. You know, you want this part to be the skeletal model. That's what everything's being, you know, constrained around. Well, you want it to be at the top of the browser. You want it to be constrained to the, uh, the, the assembly planes. It's just doing it all for you in one click of a button. Well, slightly more than one click of a button. Let's not get carried too much away, but it's, uh, it's, it's a nice little quality of life thing. Uh, right, some content center enhancements, again, niche little things. Tough. You know, o only real high-end users go into family table edits and, and actually work inside, you know, the, the content center to this level. So they, those those people probably don't need me to tell them what's new. They'll be they'll have been waiting for this for ages. If this is your thing, this is what you do. Uh, improved preview for assembly chamfers. Great. Uh, some improvements to the little mini pop-up toolbar when you click on a face. Uh, you, you get little, little buttons here. You get some extra ones for sketches and stuff, which is great. Uh, hatch cre creation enhancement. You could. Uh, can you tell I haven't read most of these yet? <laughs> it's, it's, it doesn't show. It doesn't show. I mean, to be fair, I mean, look at it. There, there is quite a lot of stuff for, for a second, you know, biannual update. To a product that's already been out there is quite a lot in here so you've got to give them credit for 
you know, you know, you, you, I just saw it the other day, man, on the Inventor Forum, someone whinging about, oh, Inventor's development slowed right down. Oh, they, 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 they're not spending money, and uh, it's just granted to a hard. The big feature in, in the last year was, you know, you fillet enhancements. Like, shut up, man, shut up. Put a canny bit in here, like, this is a canny lot for a mid... This, this here, in some products, will be their, like, annual updates in the new version. This is a second, you know, biannual update. Anyway, right, so my logic enhancements, uh, and then we've got uh, support for editing suppressed constraints. So if you're in assembly and you've suppressed a constraint, I assume this means you can now edit that constraint uh, whilst it's suppressed without having to turn it back on, which is good. Uh, and this bit here is what I wanted to show, actually, in this video. Um, is It's one of those things that you would never have stumbled across unless someone told you about it, but it is actually really useful. And that is Inventor Now, when you export your model to an image file for catalogs for technical documentation for, for whatever whatever it is you want to take a picture of your model it now removes the background automatically and if you're like oh my god it didn't do it it didn't do that before no it didn't no when you did a save as in an in, uh, inventor let's get rid of this silly little plastic doobie what's it here uh, right so when you did a file export to uh, an image it would export the background with the with the triad down here, it still exports the triad, unfortunately, but it would give you the full background. So you had to use your Photoshop skills or whatever it is you use to try and identify the background as an alpha channel, and then remove that and create transparency. Which, if you didn't, you know, if the image was compressed, you end up with jaggies and blocks around the edge of the models, and it wasn't great. So now what you can do is you can drop this on your desktop, right? In fact, tell you what, let's make this look half decent so it does come out looking alright. And this is actually not too bad. This is um, this is not just a gimmick. This will help people who've really felt the pain from the loss of Inventor Publisher. It's not going to go anywhere near, nowhere near close enough to make it up for the loss of Inventor Publisher, but it's going to help. It's going to help because you'll be able to do this from the presentation environment, I would suspect. I hope you get it. I haven't tried it, but I would imagine you can. I can't see why you wouldn't. Uh, so let's turn shadows on and uh, let's put the, uh, let's actually leave two lights on. Let's leave two lights on. We'll go into perspective mode. Uh, and then there we go. Right, so we want to export this as an image, right? Maybe zoomed in to about mm, about there. All right, I'll do. So you go file, then you go export uh, to an image. I want to drop this on my desktop, and then you've got to select PNG. Maybe TIFF will work as well, but I'm, I usually go with PNG. PNG t is typically the file format that you go with for transparency. And then what you do is bang the options button, and then you get this new ticky box here: transparent background. Mm. Uh, click OK and then hit save. Right, so that's going to export the image and then it's going to give you an image with a transparent background. So you can see there, you've now got the graphics card with the transparent background. So if we open this up in, uh, I don't know what it's going to open up as, uh, it's black. But if we were to import this into a document with a white background or with a colorful background, you'll see that the image is actually cropped uh, and then the rest of it's right. Why this though? Why this? It's really, really though. Who, who? Answer me this, Autodesk. Hmm. Who said, "Oh, I'd want to keep the triad"? I'll tell you who. Nobody. Nobody said that. So we can please get rid of that. That's that's nonsense. Why would you want to remove the background and keep the goddamn triad? That every single person that uses this, I I shit you not, every single person will need to crop this out manually. That's work they don't want to do. Great that we can do this now, don't get me wrong, but that's nonsense. That's absolute nonsense. Less of these shenanigans, come on. All right. Just that te no, you, you, there's no point in showing you. I was going to put it on a, in, a, in a Word document, you know, with a, with a, with a picture in the background. Oh, look, it really is transparent. I'm sure you believe me, it's transparent. Try it yourself. Try it yourself. It, it does work. Uh, right, so that's uh, that, that's good. That is really good. I mean, and you can see that they're actually importing a lot of these new features from the Idea Station, and the Vault team could learn a bit from that. Just saying, just saying, uh, the, the Vault team could uh, learn a thing or two there. But never mind. So they're doing they're doing good work here. They're doing good work. And uh, measure enhancements uh, came out on board now anyway. So I think we've, we've done we've done quite a lot there. That's pretty good. You got to say that's fairly good for a, a biannual uh, subscription update. There's normally three per year. I don't know if there's going to be another one. I haven't heard anything, and that's not just me being all, oh, under NDA, you know. I honestly don't know. I don't know if there's going to be a third one uh, before 2019 inevitably comes out, as it does every single year. But there you go. Invent 2018.2 with a transparency, which is good for render wars, mate. If, you, if you're looking to knock out some renders, post-processing is allowed, so you can knock out your, your, your model with a bit of transparent background. You can put it on top of a... 
of a picture you've, or a photo you've taken of, of somewhere. Use, use your imagination, man. It's Render Wars. Anyway, Reet, thanks very much. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>